Hello everyone and welcome back to TechForge, my name's Nath. Have you ever had a problem when you're playing games and suddenly your game's not playing quite as well as it used to, the frame rate's a bit lower and you're not quite sure why? I've seen a lot of these comments in forums lately where people suddenly experience massive frame rate drops and stuttering and all sorts of problems with their PC while gaming, but they can't really tell us what's happening. It's very hard to diagnose a problem without some data to go along with it. So today let's have a look at a specific program. It comes free with MSI Afterburner. It's called River Tuna On Screen Display. We're going to learn how to install it, obviously, <laughs> set it up and get it on our screen so we can have a look at what's happening in the games with regards to our hardware. Radio. to get started we should first download MSI Afterburner from MSI's website but if you already have that installed you should just skip ahead to this point in time here and we'll get straight on with setting up the OSD. Okay for those of us who need to do the install just google MSI Afterburner or click the link in the description below. Once here scroll down to Afterburner and click the downloads tab and download Afterburner. This will save as a zip file and will need to be extracted first, so extract to a location of your choosing and run the install file. Tell Windows to politely fob off and the install wizard will begin. Agree to the T's and C's and also make sure River Tuner option is ticked, otherwise you won't be able to use the on-screen display. Follow the same procedure for River Tuner as before for the most super fun awesome spacker results. Now that both are installed, it's time to set up the OSD and we get there by opening MSI Afterburner and going into settings. Once we are in settings, there are two tabs we're interested, that's on screen display and monitoring. In monitoring we have all the different parameters we'll be looking at and of course on screen display we'll toggle the screen display that we're looking at. I've chosen Alt O as my particular shortcut and you can have any sort of shortcut you're interested such as Alt-P or Alt-T or Alt-Anything really, Control-N, Alt-O is what I set it at, that's just what I remember, Alt-Off and Alt-On sort of thing. Uh, we've got uh, hardware polling period, set that at 500, that's every half second it will update your data. In the monitoring graphs window we have all the various things that we want to keep track of. You can turn these things off and on with the, the ticks beside it. So we've got stuff like power limit, temp limit, voltage limit, say if I wanted to track that you just click the tick on the left hand side and then if you want it to show up in the display you just click the show in on screen display and that is now part of the program. If you would like to see the usage on every single CPU you can click down through all of them, I already have them set up for an on screen display and you can just click them off again if you don't want to see them. You might want to leave them off for such reasons as just screen space so that your on screen display isn't taking up so much space on your screen. You can also track your CPU clock. I don't track my particular CPU clock because I'm locked at 4GHz so it doesn't really tell me much. For frame rate we're watching frame rate average and frame rate but we might as well chuck in frame time as well. That can show us if any stutters pop up. So we'll pop that in on screen display as well. Happy days! Now that's all said and done let's just launch a game quickly and pop the on screen display up just to get a feel of what everything looks like. I think I might pop on some Avorian, I know that's a fairly single threaded game so it won't be throwing CPU numbers all up all over the screen so let's get into that and see what we can find. So here we are now in game, this is Avorian, it's a little bit of a spaceship based game. As you can see there doesn't seem to be any numbers up on the screen but there they are, That we've just pressed Alt O to bring the on screen display up. So on this display we have our time up the top so we don't spend all night gaming, watch out for that. Our GPU temperature, got to keep an eye on those thermals in case it throttles. We've got our GPU utilization right there, how much of the graphics card it's using, how fast it's running and how much power it's using. And underneath that they have the amount of memory which is 3.8 gigabytes out of 6 on this particular card and also the clock speed that it's running at. Below that we've got the CPU temperature as well and then below that the utilization of the CPU itself. Now you want to watch between the CPU and also the GPU utilization. If you've got 100% GPU utilization that's a great thing. It means you're using 100% of your graphic ca graphics card's power to render the game. If you're using 100% on the CPU however that means that the system is going to be bottlenecked by that CPU and your graphics card isn't going to be able to deliver the full experience. So keep an eye on those. 
And below that it's showing that we're using 3.7 gigabytes of RAM out of our 16 gigabytes of system RAM. And below that we've got our different frame rate metrics being our current frame rate, our frame time and also our average frame rate just to keep an eye on those to make sure we're hitting the numbers that we should be hitting. And then we can just hit Alt-O, Alt-O, Alt-O and it'll just keep switching it off and on, off and on, off and on. So in this scenario we do have GPU bottleneck but it's not the memory so we're using 3.8 gigabytes and it's not the system RAM either 3.7 gigabytes none of that exceeds the RAM limits on either of those of 6 and 16 gigabytes respectively our GPU and CPU aren't overheating they're well within temperature but our CPU usage is drastically low down at 14 to 18 percent now obviously it's not as bad as having 14 percent GPU utilization but it does mean that if we could just get that CPU using a little bit more then we'd be able to pump that uh, GPU number up a little bit higher and of course increase the frame rate at the same time. So now that we've used the on-screen display to understand that we have a CPU bottleneck, what can we do to improve on that? Well, in my particular case, not a heck of a lot because the CPU is pretty much running as fast as it can on those single threads at four gigahertz. Uh, it's about all the CPU's got to give so in this particular game that relies very heavily on single threaded performance all that I could really hope for is to get a faster CPU that would then use more of the GPU and my frame rate would increase but in this case it's not so much of a problem because I'm already getting 170 to 200 frames per second or around that sort of mark at any rate which is much more than my 60 Hertz monitor can handle so it's not a problem in this case, but uh, we can use the tool to understand how the system is working with temperatures, with usage, uh, with how much RAM on the various components we're using to sort of understand the big picture. So in order to just quickly get an idea of why this CPU utilization looks so low, I'm going to just highlight all of the uh, CPU cores that I can, which is uh, six cores and 12 threads. So as you can see, there are now 12 CPU threads running. And the numbers over here will indicate how much of that particular thread is being used. So by the looks of it, we've got the majority of the work being done on CPU 3 or thread 3, and the others are doing pretty much sweet FA. Now this is what is mostly causing the bottleneck, uh, a faster CPU with only uh, four cores or four threads would probably yield a higher frame rate. but. As it stands, the frame rate's fine and it's really nothing to worry about here, but that is a way that you can check to see what sort of utilization you've got if you're getting uh, bottlenecks because the game is using more than the threads that you've got. So if you've only got a four core, four thread CPU and the game you're playing is designed for uh, eight threads to utilize many threads, then you're going to get a bottleneck there. A uh, good example of that is uh, Forza Motorsport 7, playing that on an i5. Uh, the four core, four thread CPUs, I was seeing anywhere 80 plus uh, utilization, anywhere up to 100%, and that game was really stuttery and would not play very well on that particular CPU. So there you go friends, that's the basics of RiverTuner on-screen display. You can customize it to display the things that you need obviously, and it comes in handy a lot of times, especially when something isn't quite running right. You can always just go in there, pop that on-screen display on, check it out, notice what's wrong, and then you can troubleshoot from there. But that's me down the road. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to comment or like or subscribe or share or do up your shoes and brush your hair and don't forget to wash behind your ears. I'm Nathan Techforge. See you in the next one.